now why is okay so when i asked you about the holy spirit and you took us to roman eight okay cool so you taught us how the holy spirit is a person the holy spirit is god Mm -hmm. and that led to us uh talking about how the holy spirit is a distinct person from Mm -hmm. the father and i even took you to matthew and you responded to that okay cool now but what if someone's listening to this and they're like okay well why does this matter like why does it matter if they subscribe to the teaching that there is one God who operates in three distinct co-equal co-eternal persons, father, son, the Holy spirit versus there is one God who operates in three modes as father and another mode is the son and another mode is the Holy spirit. Why is that important? Because Jesus says that unless you believe he is who he is, you'll die in your sins. John eight 24, Paul warns, Paul warns in second Corinthians 11 verses two to four, that there are people who will be preaching another Jesus from the one they preach and present a different spirit from the one believers have received and a different gospel. And those are attempts by Satan to seduce you of your spiritual purity and mislead you and damn you. So why does it matter? Because you have to know God as he is and know the true God in order to be saved. That's the statements of Jesus and his apostles. It's Jesus who said in John 8, 24, unless you believe I am, you shall die in your sins. Believe I am what? What am I? And it's Paul who said, don't put up with just any Jesus. Because in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 2 to 4, he says, if someone comes and preaches another Jesus from the one we preached, or presents a different spirit from the one you received, or preaches a different gospel, you put up with it easily. And he says, don't, because that's Satan's attempt of seducing you from your spiritual purity and devotion to Christ. So it is vitally important to know the God that you worship, unless you're worshiping a false God that you think is a true God. And I can give you an analogy. Uh, I don't know if, can I mention your, your wife and her name or, okay. What's her name? Raya. Okay. So Raya is six foot two inches. She's blonde and she's got a six pack and she competes for Miss Olympia. That's your wife. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What would you say to me? I would say that's not her. (laughs) Why not, man? It's I'm using the same name. I see what you're doing. Yeah, you, you get my you point. Just, it, yeah, you're describing a different person. You're describing. But wait, a I use the name Raya though. What's wrong with you, man? Yeah, you use the name. You use the name Raya, but you're describing a different person. That is not the woman who I was in the, at the altar with. Would you be upset woman. if I insist that's who Raya is? Uh, I would insist that you are grossly. I'm sure, she wouldn't appreciate it either. Oh, but when that comes to just human relationships, we're in, insistent and adamant. You know who my wife is or my spouse is and make sure you know and don't misrepresent or mischaracterize or describe them incorrectly. But when it comes to God, that's okay. Mm. Got you. Got you. Now, now for those who might be listening and they might go, well, I've been taught one is theology. I'm not necessarily married to it, but that's what I've been taught. And and I'm listening to this episode with Veda and Sam, and they're yes. talking all these scriptures, and it sounds really deep. You know, have I been, I feel like I'm saved. I think I'm saved, but mm-hmm. I, I, it's not like I'm married to this, but this is what I've been taught. Mm-hmm. Or is that person not saved? Like, what's the difference between a person who is still learning versus a person who yeah. has heard and is actively rejecting Yeah, well, uh, you, the you answered truth. it. Because if someone's telling me, well, I'm hearing the Trinity and I see it's, it's airtight and it's exegetically irrefutable and, and I can see why modalism is a problem, but still insist to reject it, that person is no longer ignorant. He's rejecting something he knows because he wants to cling to a tradition because he was raised in that tradition and it may cost him too much, in other words, to go the other way. But then if we use that, if we, if we follow that argument, why waste your time reaching Muslims and Joe's witnesses? Because there are Muslims who are content with their Islam. There are Joe's witnesses who are content with their Joe's witnesses and Mormons. So why bother them? Let them be content in their religion. Why even preach the gospel to show them that they're in error and here's the true God if you're going to argue that way? Mm. Right? How many Joe's witnesses are content with being Joe's witnesses? Many. How many Mormons are content with being Mormons? Many. I feel good. I got that burning sensation in my bosom as a test that Mormonism is true. I'm happy with the God I serve. So would you allow that for them and allow them to use that excuse or you Um, insist? It doesn't matter what your feelings are. It doesn't matter what you think. Truth is truth, irrelevant, irrespective of whether you acknowledge it to be true or not. Right. So why is it now when it comes to modalism, you want to now excuse yourself and justify believing in it if it's a different God? Because it basically turns Jesus out to be a deceiver. Why do I keep saying that? 
because the clear teaching of the Bible is the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, are not the same <clears throat> person or relationship. That they're different relationships, which is why they pray to one another, love one another, have communion with one another, and glorify the other. The clear reading is they're different relationships that are inseparable and in love with one another. But if modalism is true, they're not distinct persons and relationships. It's one person assuming different modes, giving us the impression that it's not the same person, but in reality it is, but in a different mode. And then it makes Jesus a liar when he says in John 8, 17 to 18. If you don't mind, go to John 8, 17, 18, but read 17 to 19. Watch here. So you end up with a God who's either deceiving us or misleading us or lying because he gives us the impression he's not one person when reality he is, and then thereby misleading us into thinking that the God had consists of three. When reality, it's not three persons. It's one God, one person in three modes. Because notice what it does to Jesus' words here in John 8, 17, 18. But read all the way to 19. See what it says here. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. Then verse 19 says, they said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. But here's my question. He said, the law demands, the law that God gave, you need two people. Now, the Greek is actually two men, anthropoi, but that's fine. Two men to confirm a matter. Jesus says, I'm one such person, one man, and my father is another. Not if modalism is true. So did Jesus lie to them? I'm trying to think on off the fly, you know, an argument for oneness. Uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Either you're going to say Jesus is so oh, only a Oh, wait, man. I got one. I got one. Go I got yeah. one. Okay, so so in, in oneness teaching, you know, they they might say that that the Father is not the Son. It is the Father that is in the Son. So that so can is the still, son the same person as the father? The father is in the son. Yeah, but the father's in me, and I'm still a different person from the father. Right. So is the son a different person from the father, or is it a, the mode of the father? It's still the father in a different mode. It it would still be two distinct people. They would still yeah, they would still be, be two distinct. No, it's not distinct people. It's one person in two modes. It's like me saying to you, look. Two men are required to confirm something. I, Sam Shimon, the husband, bear witness, and I, Sam Shimon, the son, bear witness. See, that's two. Right. No, but, but what I was saying, what I was saying is, if Jesus is born in Bethlehem, he is a distinct person, but, but the, God the Father is in him, they are two distinct okay. people. But I'm so saying that's still, but I'm saying be, that still no, doesn't work. No, let's go there. No, 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 even modalism. How, would you, so modalism is saying Jesus is just a man. A human person distinct from God the Father. Right. That's what I'm saying. It still doesn't work. So, but what I'm saying, let's go with it, though. I want to go okay. with that argument. So what, what you're telling me is it's not a mode of the Father. It is a human person that the Father indwells. Yes. Okay. So then, in what way is Jesus the mode of the Father, then? In what way is Jesus Because you just the told me he's a human father. person that the Father indwells. Right. But he's not a mode of the father then any more than i'm the mode of the father because the father indwells me so is he a mode of the father or is he a human person that the father indwells mm. well that's why the arguments don't work thank you amen <laughs> so but if we take the assumption that these are two modes the son is the human mode of the father then jesus lied it's still one person not two persons testify mm. well good that's where I go. That's why I'm a Trinitarian. So I don't got a response for you that. I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's actually, I brought that up because uh, people may not be aware. I had two debates with a oneness minister, Stephen Ritchie, who's since deceased. Those two debates can be found on Acts 17 Apologetics, David Wood's channel. It was, does the Old Testament teach a Trinity? Does the New Testament teach a Trinity? He tried to use those objections against me. And I'll let you decide how well he did. And by way of testimony, glory to God, one oneness contact me, said, after the debates, by the grace of God's spirit, He's no longer a oneness. He's a Trinitarian. No, to God be the glory. To yep. God be the glory. Now, Hallelujah. now, why is...